God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. And if the stars were made to worship so light, I can see your heart in it. Every burning star signal fire grace And if creation sings your praises so alive
And as you speak, a hundred billion fairies disappear. Well, you lost your life so I can find it. Sasio. I'm in fifth grade of Flight 56 and I'm daughter of Crystal Sasio. 
My mom is very sweet, kind, loving, caring, thoughtful, trustworthy, and more. Even when I am sad or frustrated, my mom always helps me give and gives me amazing hugs. In my opinion, I believe my mom's a super mom. Even when I got C-team basketball for school, she told me to be one of the best and try your hardest. I believed her, so I did, and I got MVP. She never lets me give up on anything. My mom helps me succeed in lots of things and is funny. She is my number one supporter in everything I do. Even though my mom has been through lots of things, she helps me choose the right path of life and her kindness spreads to people all around her. I know that my mom cares about everybody, but most importantly, me too. Describe my unexplainable love for my mommy. I'm going to explain it with an acrostic poem. To start off, M stands for how she is one out of a million and how marvelous she is. O stands for how outgoing, outstanding, and original you are. M represents how she always makes me feel safe and happy. M can also represent her mighty love for us, God, and Mickey. Finally, Y represents how beautiful, smart, and hardworking you are. These are just a few things to describe my amazing mommy. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for taking care of us, loving us, putting our needs before yours, and making me who I am. I love you. Hello, my name is Brooklyn Maddox, and today I'm going to be telling you how special and amazing my mom is. So, first of all, what is in there to love about my mom? She's so special and amazing and unique. I just, I love everything about her, from her personality to what she does for me, my siblings, and my father every day, just on a daily basis for us. She's special because of how much she cares about us. I don't believe I've met any other person who cares half as much as her. I love how she will support me through anything and everything. She will help me with anything I need because she cares about me. For example, I had a social studies project last week and she just jumped right in, willing and ready to help me because she cares about how I do in school and life. I also love how she takes time out of her day to come to my sports events or do something nice. I love how strong she is in her faith and I admire her as a strong Christian woman. I look up to her because she is an amazing role model. I'm so grateful for everything she does for me. I love you, Mom. Hi guys, it's me, Tommy. I'm going to speak about my mom and she's an awesome mom ever. And I love her and she just get me stuff, buy stuff, everything that I want. Not, not everything. And she's my special and I love her ever and ever. She's the best mom ever and ever. And she's, she's the awesome and happy Mother's Day. My mom is the best. She is kind, honest, and loving. She also doesn't let anyone go if they're being rude or doing something that she doesn't allow. She also encourages people to do their best. And she doesn't worry. Even during this time, she chooses faith over fear. That's what I like the best about her. And these are the reasons why I know my mom is the best. Hi, Miss Lisa. It's Haley. And I want you to know that my mom is super awesome. I mean, she gave birth to me and my brother. That's how awesome she is. She loves us and she cares for us. She loves us even when we are crazy. We love you, Mom. Hi, I'm Bella, and I'm going to list reasons why my, why my mom is the best mom in the whole world. One reason is when um, she just plays with me, and I really like it. I'm very, very thankful for that. Another reason is my cat, she got squashed by our welcome sign and my mom picked it up and helped her. She ended up being one of my favorite cats. 
Another one is that she teaches me about Jesus, and you know, she let she lets me work in the little room, so I can take care of the kids. I really really like that, and those are. And those are my reasons. Another, re uh, the last reason is that I really love her. She's one of the best moms. Happy Mother's Day, mommy. Happy Mother's Day, mom. Happy Mother's Day, mom. Happy Mother's Day, love you. You're so nice, mommy. The way you're so beautiful, mom. I love how you're so outgoing. Forgiving. Patient. Show your love for Jesus. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love, love you. Hey, Mom. Thank you for all the things you do for us and give us a roof over our head and help us with everything we need. We wouldn't have anything without you. Love you. I just want to say that I love you so much and thank you for getting me through all my hard times and thank you for all you do for us. I really appreciate it. Little Booger! And how Hi. you made us three gems! Mm. We, we wanted to let you know, you know you're, you're one of a kind! kind. We My name is Ella, and hi, Miss Lisa. Well, whoever's watching this, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm trying to win the Mother's Day basket today, <laughs> or whatever day you are watching this. And let's get started. My mom has to take care of four special needs kids. One has epilepsy, and one has autism, and two of us have ADHD and my up and my sister Emily has epilepsy and my mom has to bathe her dress her because she can't do like everyday activities that well she can't walk she has to have a wheelchair she has to she can't like basically do stuff as a normal teenager can do. And let's move on with my brother with autism. My brother is 12, his name is Evan, and he has autism, and he's allergic to eggs. It's so hard for my mom to take care of like four special needs kids. And my brother, like, I don't really know, like, he seems like a normal kid, but, like, I don't, and he has holes in his heart. That's basically all I know. Now let's move on to my sister. She doesn't really have anything, like, she doesn't have anything. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us we cannot contain your love will surely come find us like blazing wildfire singing your name God of mercy, sweet love of mine, I have surrendered to your design. May this offering stretch across the sky, these hallelujah, he Inside of 
we cannot contain Your love we surely confined us Like blazing wildfire Singing your name
go up as the walls come down Oh creation, everything with breath repeat the sound All his children, green hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God His name is Jesus Swing wide, all you heavens Let the praise go up as the walls come down All creation Everything with breath repeat the sound All his children Clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God His name is Jesus Swing wide, all ye heavens Let the praise go up as the walls come down All creation to the 
Hey, thanks, Trevor. Thanks, band. Welcome to worship, everyone. It's Mother's Day weekend. We're glad that you're watching with us. Hi, Mom. And favorite mother-in-law, I'll get in trouble if I don't say that. I know we all have moms that we love, and we're so thankful uh, that you are joining us this weekend. Pastor Dave, in just a moment, has got a great time together with some uh, great gals. Uh, you do not want to miss that. We, for you ladies, this next week, we've got something sweet for you. Uh, that is a gift. Now, while supplies last, we want you uh, to come to the frap house between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m., Monday through Friday. I'd come earlier in the week if I was you. Uh, and we've got a gift of chocolate, a chocolate truffle from uh, a place here in town. You're going to love it. It's our way of saying thank you. Uh, you make life sweeter. Uh, and uh, we're so thankful for you in our life. Now, I don't know about you, but last weekend, I thought Pastor Dudley did a great job with his message. And in his message, he challenged so many of us to make sure that we're continuing to connect in community during this time. We were blown away by how many of you want to be a part of a virtual short-term group. And so uh, you can email us right now, uh, uh, groups at mycrosscity.com, and Pastor Mike and our Life Groups team will get you connected this week in a short-term uh, virtual life group because life is better together, and we'd love to have you join us and be a part of that. Hey, we want you to know that as you continue to stay connected with us, you can do that through social media. Uh, you can also do that by making sure that we can pray for you. Uh, maybe you've gotten a phone call recently, a voicemail, an email from a staff member. We just want you to know that we love you, we're praying for you, and we want to pray specifically for you. So if you would like us to pray for you, go ahead and email us prayer at mycrosscity.com. If you have a need at all in your life, uh, especially financially during this tough time, you can email us assistance at mycrosscity.com and a member of our team during this time will connect with you within 24 hours. And we're going to see if we can come alongside and support you financially. All this is possible by you continuing to make uh, generosity and being a steward a priority. Uh, many of you give already financially. Uh, some of you have come during the week to the frap house when it's open, Monday through Friday. But many of you have begun to text, and you can text CC Fresno uh, 77977, and you can give financially. It'll take you to a secure site. And it's, it's our way of saying thank you for helping the mission uh, continue to go forward during this time. It really is making a huge difference. Well, we're going to transition now into a time of communion. Hopefully, you've already prepared uh, juice and a cup, and you're reminded of the fact that this is just not communion. It's just not a meal, but it's a symbolic meal. Now, pretty likely this weekend, you're, you're having a meal to celebrate Mother's Day. Most of you are. And when you're there, you'll be there with your family, probably. Uh, and, and that's special because that's your family. But, but there's some of you right now, you're not with family uh, for whatever reason. And I need you to know that you are with family at Cross City. You're part of the family of God. And we get the opportunity to share a meal together right now. You know, when Jesus was here on earth, people said, hey, your family's here. They want to talk to you. And he says, who's my family? You're my family. And I need you to know that you're our family. And we love you. And we're in this together. And our hope is, is that this would be a very meaningful time. A time of connecting with God and each other. Would you join me in prayer? Let's pray. So God, we're reminded of the fact uh, that the bread is your life and the juice is your death. And when we eat this bread and we drink of this cup, we are remembering you. We're also mindful of the fact that right now there's a lot going on swirling in our life. This last week was a, a day of prayer. And we're mindful of the fact that we're praying for our government. We're praying for our economy. We're praying for uh, our, our educational system. We're praying for our families. We're praying for depression. We're praying for discouragement. That Jesus, that you would fill the gap. We're so grateful to know that you're, that you're not leaving us alone. That you're with us in the midst of the storm. And so this week and this Mother's Day week, and we're thankful for our family as well. A family that's not only here on earth physically, but a spiritual family that will last forever and ever and ever. God, thank you so much that you loved us, that you gave us your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his very powerful name that we pray. Amen and amen.
I wrote this song for my wife not long after we had our first child. And uh, I figured out pretty quick after that that what she wanted the most from me uh, really w- w- were two things. Uh, my undivided attention and my time. So for all you moms out there, happy Mother's Day. Break out your dancing shoes tonight I'm in the mood to celebrate I hope that's alright There's no occasion Nobody to invite Baby, it's just you and me tonight Take that apron from your waist We can find somebody else To straighten up this place And don't try to argue I'm in no mood to fight Maybe it's just you and me Sometimes we need to get away From the things to do and the bills to pay And step back to how we used to be When it was only you and me Let me Open up your door I want to do the little things I don't do anymore Cause I'm still your man And you're my beautiful bride And maybe it's just you and me tonight Sometimes we need to get away From the things to do and the bills to pay And step back to how it used to be When it was only you and me Your beauty inspires me And reminds me what a lucky man I am Sometimes we need to get away From the things to do and the bills to pay And step back to how it used to be See things the way we used to see When it was only you and me Hey everybody, happy Mother's Day to all of you. We're here at Cross City and uh, of course there's nobody in the room except uh, I have some wonderful moms here on the stage and uh, we just wanted to do something a little different this weekend and uh, I'm not going to preach. Maybe at the very end if we have some time left I'll have a little devotion or something but I just wanted to ask these great moms some questions and hopefully their answers will uh, inspire us not just our moms, but everybody to live a life that uh, would honor the Lord. And uh, I've got my, my wife here, and I've got my mother here. And uh, mom, mom's name is Patricia Louise Beatty, but she goes by Patty. And, of course, uh, we're kind of in some difficult times. We, she lost her husband, and I lost my dad about uh, a month ago, five, six weeks ago. And, uh, but we're, we're trudging through. Mom, tell us, 
Uh, how you met Dad? Can you tell us that? Well, uh, his daddy was actually my preacher when I was a little girl. My grandfather. Your grandfather. And uh, he was the preacher's son and had all the attention that preacher's kids get. But anyway, I grew up in this church. I thought maybe I'd be a missionary. I had no idea I would marry a preacher. And uh, in our second or third year school, Dean changed schools and came to where I was in Atlanta, Georgia. And from there, we started talking and being with one another and got married. So what, how was the dating like when you first started dating and all of that? Well, you know, he's always had a sense of humor. And from the very beginning, he'd say, when are we getting married? <laughs> and I said, well, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, he just kept persisting. And, you know, I finally said, okay. I actually ran off. My folks didn't want me to get married. And I was back in Oklahoma, and I ran off in a snowstorm, got on a bus, and went back to Atlanta, and we got married in Atlanta. Wow. And your parents weren't there? My parents were not there, no. How long did it take them to forgive you? To Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Okay, you are the mom of, of five kids. Right. Dreama, the first, Deborah, the second. Dudley, who preached here last week, by the way, did a fantastic job. He did. And then Dino, named after our father's namesake, and then me. Uh, I, I don't think anybody here has five kids. Could you tell us what it's like to raise five kids? It's, you know, at the time, I didn't think a thing of it. I mean, it was actually a great time. And I know mothers with little children, you think it's never going to get over. But it goes very fast, and before you know it, they're grown. But it was a great time. Uh, Dean was a great dad. Um, you know, we had wonderful times, and it, I, I really didn't think of it as a hard chore at all. Uh, looking back, do you have any uh, parental advice? I mean, you raised five kids. Uh, all five went to Bible college. All five uh, went into ministry. And uh, four of them are still in ministry after all these years. Um, do you have any parental advice in raising uh, good godly kids? You and Dad did a, I think you did a phenomenal job. Well, uh, there's a saying, uh, spare the rod and spoil the child. And we had a little bit of that in our family. Some uh, got, got it more than others. <laughs> but uh, also I feel like, you know, children are like sponges, and everything you do and say, they soak up. And I feel like, you know, if you show the fruits of the Spirit in your life with joy and kindness and self-control, and they see that in your life, they absorb that. Uh, we also, uh, of course, we are, uh, it's a preacher's family, and church was never a question. Church was just part of our life. And they grew up being in the church, and um, I feel like with their dad's influence mostly, what made them turn out. They're, they're all around 60 now. I can't believe that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they've done so wonderfully in their ministries. Well, I just want to say thank you. I love you so much. Uh, I, I know a lot of people think I am my dad's I'm a daddy's boy, but the reality is I've always been a mama's boy, and uh, <laughs> you you have blessed my life. Your your example uh, means the world to me, and I would not be here. I said that that dad's a funeral, that the, none of none of this would have happened without him. Uh, but the reality is, I don't think any of this would have happened without you. I think you're the, the glue behind the scenes. I think you inspired him, and uh, I, I, I know you inspired me and, and my brothers and sisters. So just want to say honey. thank you. Thank you, and I love you, and thank you for coming up here. And I know it's not easy. Okay, so thank you, Mom. Love you much. And now I want to go to my wife, Sue Ann. Sue Ann Rutherford uh, is also from Oklahoma. Grove, Oklahoma, 
Uh, we met at Ozark Christian College. Uh, I was a freshman when I first met her. You were a sophomore. She's a year older. And, uh, uh, but we did, not, we did not begin dating till our, the, the summer after my junior year. She had already left school. She'd gone to Missouri Southern uh, studying to be a dental hygienist. And uh, you, you want to explain any of that or how we started? <laughs> how we started dating? Yeah. Well, as I recall, you called me up on the phone. Yes. And, and asked me to sing at your church one Sunday morning. Yes. And I said yes. It was the summer. It was early June. So I agreed, and then about five minutes later, you called back. I did. And said, I really wanted to ask you out, <laughs> but I didn't know how, so I used that as an excuse. I was pretty weak. <laughs> so I said yes. Reluctantly. Reluctantly. She did not want to go out with me. Who well, would? Well, let's see. When I hung up the phone, I did ask my roommate, why did I say yes? <laughs> but we went out on our first date, and we basically never broke up. And you are the mother of two boys. Yes. What, what are their names? Drew and Zach. Drew and Zach. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been in Fresno for 25 years. Yes. And they were, how, how old were they when two we moved Two and five. Here? Two and five. Mm -hmm. They went to our preschool. They did. And uh, they're pretty good kids. They both love the Lord. Yes. Uh, Zach is now on our staff and uh, helping out with the, our, our high school youth group. Um, do you have any words of inspiration on how to raise two godly boys in this kind of world? Well, I, I mean, I was a preacher's kid, and there were a lot of expectations. I, I know. Yeah. And there were a lot of expectations. And so I never really wanted to marry a pastor. You told me that early yes. on, yes. So, you know, God had a different uh, scenario for my life. But I think raising boys and being in a pastor's family, there are a lot of expectations, like kind of living in that fishbowl. I think uh, we probably put expectations on them. It's just natural, but I think everybody else does too because everybody's looking, you know, and just examining you the whole entire time. So you have to be on point almost. Right. And it's just, I think it's hard. And in this day and age, I think it takes a, a village to raise kids. And I'm so grateful, so thankful for this church family and the influences that so many of the people had on our kids. That's right. I agree. It's totally a God thing, but I just want to encourage parents to keep your kids in church and to have them go to youth group. I think that's what saved our kids. Um, I just think the influence and the um, people poured into our kids. And I'm just, I'll, I'll be eternally grateful for that. Right. And it's weird because a lot of preacher's kids are kind of wild. Uh, they kind of stray. And, and, and again, our kids aren't perfect. We aren't, we aren't perfect. But I, I, I just believe that these youth groups that they attended, the preschool, I mean, they, they were influenced by good godly men and women. Yes, and, and I'm uh, so grateful for that too. I am too, and I, I think you, you played a huge part oh, of that. Thanks. I mean, you, were, you worked, you were a dental hygienist uh, when we first moved here four days a week, and then you scaled back to two and a half days a week, and mom helped babysit. Yes. That was yeah. a big part of it. Yes. And, they loved being around their grandpa. That was really how we got here, was the opportunity to be with my dad and mom. Yeah, and most, most definitely. I was never raised around any of my relatives. My grandparents lived so far away, and I saw them maybe once a year. So when the opportunity came for this to possibly take place, I, I just was so elated because I never had that opportunity. And so for my kids to have that opportunity was a real treasure. Do you have, what word, if you had to just come up with one word, what word would you use to describe our family? <laughs> well, you're their dad. We might have to edit this out. 
You understand that. And if there's Dean a, was their, a Dean long... was their grandpa. <laughs> so the one word that comes to mind in the Rutherford family especially is humorous. Uh, I just think, um, hmm. you know, we just had a good time. Yes, we did. We like to laugh. Yes. Yeah. And make each other laugh. And you are uh, you're a grandparent now. Yes. Of a little girl named Mackenzie Jean. Yes. And there's another one on the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, so tell us about what it's like to be a grandma. Oh, my goodness. I, I love it. I just, um, you know, everybody always says, just wait till you have grandkids. And, you know, and it's true. You know, uh, I, I love being a grandma. Especially, a to, especially to a little girl. Yes. I'm having so much we fun. We have two boys. And another girl on the way. And another so, girl on the way. Yes. So you're, she's in hog heaven. Yes. Most yeah. definitely. <laughs> Well, it's, thank you so very much for being up here and answering some odd questions. I want to ask Autumn Robertson some questions. She is our uh, women's ministry director. And uh, how long have you had that job? Uh, it'll be a year uh, next month. A, coming up on a year. Coming up on a year. You were the assistant and now you're... Yes, I was, I was serving as the Bible study coordinator for our women's Bible study and... Now I've been here a year, and it's been probably one of the biggest blessings in my life, besides my children. So um, what's it like to be on a church staff like this? It's kind of weird, isn't it? You know, I, serving helped out a lot because it already felt like family. So, it, you know, when you come in, you don't know how people are going to respond to you or what they're going to think about you. But my, I really do love my team. I was so thankful when Sue Ann came on um, with me because then I felt like I had like my partner in crime, but they, it, it's, it's been such a wonderful experience. I mean, I can't believe it's been a year, like a year in June. I was like, where, where did that year go? You're just starting. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, you're not, you're not getting out of here. So No, I, yes, I, I do know that. And I, I have no plans to go anywhere. Good. So uh, do you have a great favorite Mother's Day memory that you'd like to share at all? I think for me, I still, I have younger kids. I think I probably have the youngest kids. on. How old are your kids? My kids, I have Noah, who is nine, and Reagan, who's seven. Noah and Reagan. Noah and Reagan. And I named my boy Reagan. He doesn't go by Reagan. He goes by Drew, but I love the name Reagan. And that's why we get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have Noah, who's nine, Reagan, who's seven. And I think for me, I, it's probably going to be my first Mother's Day. So Noah was born in April. So my first Mother's Day, I had a month old infant. So you can imagine what I looked like, um, <laughs> what I felt like. I was tired. But at the same time, uh, we were so blessed by him coming into my life. And I, I truly remember like looking at him and just feeling like I get to be his mom. And he was precious and he was little. And so I think for me, that'll just cement in my mind. Reagan may not forgive me for that since she's not my favorite <laughs> in this story. She's got her own favorite stories. But I, th I really do think it's when you become a mom for the first time and you get to experience what it's like to be a mom and be celebrated as a mom, you look at life completely different. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh... Can you share your perspective? You are a single mom. You've been through a divorce. Um, can you share that perspective on what it's like to be on a church staff? But not only that, you're, you're living life as a single mom. It's got to be very challenging. And uh, you, you want to... You know, when I became a single mom, there is a part of me, a big part of me that said, I'm not going to define myself by that. I'm a mom. And I may not be a wife anymore, but I'm still a mom, I'm still a daughter, I'm still a friend. So I think letting go of that single mom stigma, um, I did that for myself. So I just live life. Uh, it is tough, but I'm gonna echo what Sue Ann had said, that it takes a village to raise children. And I've had a village here. I mean, the moment that my life took that turn, uh, this church embraced every piece of me. They embraced my prayer requests, um, they reached out to me, and then they just started to love on me, and they started to love on my children, and it, they have just made the difference in 
not feeling like I'm out there alone and I'm single. Uh, I have a family. I have, I have my physical family and I have my church family. And they're all blended together uh, in my daily life. And I mean, how, how lucky do I get to say that I'm on staff at the place that took me in and uh, made me feel like I belong somewhere. Well, I want you to know we're grateful for you. We're excited about the future of our women's ministries. And uh, your, your folks also moved here not long ago, and, and we love them too. They're, they're awesome. They, you know, that was a big part of the village is they picked up and sold their house that they lived in for 40 years up in the Bay Area because they just felt it was time. Uh, the, shift, the shift just happened for them, and they moved down here just at the time where I needed them to, and about a year later after that, I came on staff, and I couldn't do this job. I couldn't do what I do if it wasn't for them and for their help. I, I don't even know if I can explain what a blessing. I mean, think it goes back. Like, your, your kids, Sue Ann, you guys' kids, got to be with their grandparents, and my kids get to be with their grandparents, and they always ask, can we sleep over? Yes, yes, and until they stop asking, they're going to keep doing that. So that's been a huge blessing as well. It is a joy and a blessing. And I, I, you know, one of the reasons I think our kids turned out okay is because uh, they didn't just have a mom and a dad, but they had a grandpa and a grandma who spoiled them, who loved on them, and set a great example by loving the Lord too. And I, I just think that's an unbeatable uh, calculation. I think that's one of the great things about our church family uh, there's a lot of people who don't have moms or dads but they're, or grandparents around, but uh, our church can kind of come in and supplement that and, uh, like you said, be like the village. It's a team effort. I mean, it takes everybody, and I think that's one of the great things about uh, our church. Autumn, thank you so very, very much. Appreciate your testimony. want to move on to uh, Jamie. Hello. Hi, Jamie. Hi. How are you doing? Great. You are leading the next gen team. Correct. How many staff people do you have under you? Do you know? Uh, there are 12. There's 13 12. of us on the team. So what does that, what range is that? Birth through college. Birth through college. What is uh, one of your favorite Mother's Day memories or traditions or something that you do or have done in the past or something that just stands out in your mind as something that's a, your best Mother's Day? Yeah, like Autumn, I think becoming a mom is such a huge, huge time. I was pregnant with Hannah uh, my first Mother's Day, and I it's weird because I wasn't actually a mother yet, but I was. And it's funny, my husband, Kevin, he gave me this necklace of a mother and child, and I always remember that, and it's funny because I wore it, and I distinctly remember both of my children at different times wearing that necklace asking me about it. We're storytellers in our family. And I think for me, Mother's Day is storytelling for us, um, more than like going out to dinner and doing stuff. I, I have a wonderful mom. She, my parents moved here as well. Yes, they did. Us, and we are very grateful, and it's made such a huge difference in our family. And, um, but I also was influenced by my grandmother and my great-grandmother. I actually had a really close relationship with my great-grandmother as well. Um, she didn't pass away until I was in college, or actually my freshman year of college. And so I grew up around some wonderful women. And so I think for me, Mother's Day is really sharing stories about them. Uh, it's that generational of the impact that my grandmother had on me, my great-grandmother, my mother. And we talk about that a lot on Mother's Day and uh, just their influence and their love for us and care for us. Now, I want to ask you this question. What is the significance of the number 936? Is yeah, there's 936 weeks from the time our children are born until they turn 18. And so something that we do in our department that we really talk to parents about a lot, and we, I think as parents like myself, we live by is that if we count the weeks, we make the weeks count in our kid's life. And so there's 936 weeks. And if you look at it even this way, there's 18 summers, which seems so much shorter. Oh, and I it think does. it's about intentional parenting. It's about being intentional with our kids and intentional in our home. It's, it's really talking about what the Lord's doing on a daily basis. You know, we do a lot of Bible memory. Ver you know, we've all done that. We've been raised in the church, I think, most of us. And I think our kids were raised in the church. And as much as Bible memorization is important and we love it, 
it's really like the daily life. It's like the practical of why that matters. And so, yeah, that 936 is just making your weeks count because it goes fast. It goes very fast. Yes, it really does go fast. Um, I'm a grandparent now, and um, my kids are, I think I have a 30-year-old son, so it, it's hard to believe that it goes by that fast. I got one more question for you. What does a healthy family look like and a healthy, dynamic family in the church look like? Yeah. Well, my kids, I have, I've been introduced to my kids since everybody else did. I have a Hannah and Ezekiel. Hannah is 20 and Ezekiel's 16, so it does go fast. And I think for us, the game changer for our kids has been serving in the church, serving as a family, and then as they got older, um, them choosing to serve. Because through the ups and downs of life, they've had other influences besides us. They serve alongside other adults in the church. They're serving with um, you know other leaders in the church. And I think they've been able to see healthy models of uh, Christian life, Christian marriages. There's stages in life. Now that I have a grown adults in my home and a teenager that thinks he's an adult in our home, <laughs> I, I realize looking back how important those people are that have spoke truth to them. And so I'm just grateful for it. And, and so I would say raising, there's no art in raising, um, raising Christian kids or living in a Christian community. It's, it, it really is everybody's individual, but it's about the community. It's about giving them the community. And it's hard. It's hard to drive them when they can't drive and be here every Wednesday and be here every Sunday. And believe it or not, even though my kids were raised in the church, there were seasons they pushed back on it and said, I, I don't really want to go this Wednesday. But that wasn't really negotiable. Even through the rough seasons, they were going to be here because I knew there were people that loved them and they just needed, if they didn't memorize a verse or they didn't, catch the sermon that day, they still were being loved. And that was important. And that got them through kind of the rough patches. So I think it's community and doing life together. Thank you so very much. Yeah, thank you. Love you. All right. Well, now we're going to shift gears a little bit. I want to talk to Amy Deffenbacher. Amy is uh, the wife of my associate pastor, uh, Brent Deffenbacher, who is a huge help to me every single day. And Amy is uh, the principal at Fresno Christian School. How long have you had that job? This is my sixth year as principal at Fresno Christian, and I taught there for one year prior to that. Early in my career, I taught in Fresno Unified and Central Unified. Um, can you tell us what it's like to be married to, to a pastor? He's been a pastor of several churches, and he's now a, an associate here. But uh, what's it like to be married to a preacher? Um, it, it's not what I ever thought I would do. Marrying a preacher for me, especially in the first year where I was learning some new lessons, it was all very new for me. I grew up in a Christian family, but um, the the people looking at me and the expectations that I thought people might have of me or ultimately of my children um, caused some anxiety and fear for me. It was I was afraid that I would mess up my children or that I would you know, not represent my husband or his ministry well. And, and I had some great mentors early on who reminded me that my greatest ministry was to make sure that my husband and my children had a healthy family to come home to. Um, and out of that, their ministries would be healthy as well. And, and that was very freeing for me. Um, you know, we talked about preacher's kids kind of getting a bad rap sometimes. That was another thing that I was very fearful of, that I would have super naughty kids that nobody in the church wanted to be around. Right. Um, that was hard for me. When my kids were little, it was really important to me to show them how to be children that adults would like to be around. Um, and I'm so thankful now to be in that season of life, and several people mentioned it, where I'm watching them take ownership of those things for themselves. Um, just picking up on little nuggets of what everyone has said today. I think the routine, the we do go to church, it's not negotiable whether you want to be there or not, but building that into their lives, bringing them along with us to serve, and now watching them choose their own places to serve and have it really come from their hearts. That is the most rewarding thing to me about being a mom, and I'm enjoying this season. Amy, thank you so very much. And, uh, Love you and love your husband and everything that's going on. I want to thank all of you. You've been a huge blessing. And I want to take just a few moments, and uh, hopefully this won't go too long, but uh, I, I read recently where a church did a huge survey 
uh, all the moms in this church, and the church is much larger than ours, and they got all the moms to face their fears and their frustrations and to really come up with things that they need. And I just want to close out by sharing a few things that moms need. The first one on the list from this survey was that moms need patience. Moms not only need patience, but they need to teach patience with their kids. One mom said in the survey, I need to find the peace of Christ when they're crying and they're fussing and they're demanding things and children are making all kinds of noise in my house. And I just think we all need patience. And it's not easy, but I want you to know that God understands. Psalm 78 says, though he did all of this for them, they continue to test his patience. And I think moms get that. And if you ever feel like nobody understands, you need to know that God understands what you're going through. Patience is an expression of love. Ephesians 4 says, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Another thing about patience, it causes us to grow. If you read the first part of James chapter 1, God has a lot of love and patience. And if you ask for it, he will give it to you. So patience is great. Moms need it. It helps us. It's a picture of love. It causes us to grow. Another thing moms need in this survey was they need appreciation. The Bible recognizes that we all need a little bit of appreciation. Philippians 1.3 says, I thank my God every time I remember you. It's good to appreciate other people, and it's great to appreciate your mom. And even if your mom's been gone for a long time, uh, it's still good to appreciate what she did for you and the things that, you know, she brought you into this earth. The Bible says to honor your mother and your father. And if you could just do that, even in the smallest way, it'd be good for you. It'd be good for your soul. Another thing that moms need, moms need a life. In this survey, moms talked about time management. Somebody wrote about this monotonous routine. They said, sometimes it feels like Groundhog Day. I wake up to the same thing every single morning. Well, learn to take care of yourself. When you're always putting everyone else in front of you and everyone else before you, you run the risk of losing your own identity. Moms need a life. In Psalms 127, we read, it's useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. We need to find that balance in our lives. Jesus said in John 10, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. We want all of our moms to have the abundant life life and to model that for their kids. That's what we want. Another thing mom, moms need, according to the survey, they need wisdom. And I just think with everything going on today, moms really need wisdom. Moms need wisdom uh, to know when to hold on and when to let go. Moms need wisdom to, to know when to say yes and to when to say no. Uh, moms need wisdom when it comes to discipline, uh, to know how, to know when. I mean, moms need wisdom. Again, in James 1, verse 5, if you need wisdom, ask him for it. He will give it to you. Another thing uh, moms need is validation. Uh, in other words, moms need to be recognized because what they do is so very important. And I don't want to read the whole chapter, but at the end of Proverbs chapter 31, we call that the, 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 the chapter for moms or wives. It really is a powerful passage. And at the very end of that chapter, here's what we read. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also does that. He praises her. And many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward that she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Moms need to be 
validated. And I just want to say, you know, moms, uh, I thank you so very much. And I've seen what you're doing as a mom. And you are, you are building people. You are building children. There are only two things in this world that are going to last forever, according to the things I've read in the Bible. One is the Bible itself, but the only other thing that's going to last forever are people, and you're building them. Uh, this body is just the cage, but that, that spirit, their soul is going to live forever. This building we're in, the one we're, we're just now getting ready to complete, it's beautiful. We love it. it. It does so much for us. But that beautiful building isn't going to last forever. That building's not going to go into eternity. Companies don't last forever. Uh, Well-run companies, th th they're not going to make it. Your bank account's not going to last forever. Governments, even as powerful as they are right now and the stuff they're telling us to do and not to do, they're not going to last forever. But your people that you're pouring into, they're going to last forever. And it is so important that you keep building those people. Uh, number six on the list, moms need communication. They need to talk. They need to have time to speak. They need to be listened to. And they need to be spoken to. Uh, one mom said, I need my teenagers to talk to me. Communication is vital, both sides of it. Ephesians 4, by the way, when you talk to your mom, you need to talk to them in the right way. It says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Number seven, this is big, moms need rest. In this survey, it was very clear and evident that moms are dealing usually with twin emotions, exhaustion and guilt. Exhaustion because they're doing too much and guilt because they felt like they weren't doing enough. Jesus said, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Our moms need rest. And finally, moms need faith. In John 14, Jesus said, do not be troubled. Trust in God, and now trust in me. And I just think that's about as big as it gets. We need to we need to learn to lean on him. That's what he's saying. You can do that. That's why I'm here. That's what faith is all about. You can turn to me, Jesus is saying. You can trust me. That's where you find your faith. The last passage I want to share comes from Philippians chapter 4. It says, and I love this for all women, whether you're a mom or not, even our men, but moms, I love it for you as well. It says, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That is the value of faith in our everyday life. Moms need faith. They need patience, appreciation, they need a life, they need wisdom, they need validation, communication, they need rest, and they need faith. I want to thank you for joining us, and I'd like to close with just a word of prayer. Lord, we love you so very much. We thank you for this day and opportunity. I thank you for each woman here on this stage and all the women in our church family, Lord. Boy, Father, you are so good, and you set such a great example, and I pray that as they have mentioned several times here that uh, our church family would encourage one another, help one another through these difficult times and help each other with our, our families because our families, they need more than just a mom or a dad. They, it, they do need a village. They do need the other people in the youth group and other people in, in different ministry teams to help them, to encourage them, to bring them along step by step. God, you're so good. We love you so very much. We praise you. We want to honor our moms so very, very much. We thank you for this special weekend. And we just say, Heavenly Father, we love you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Greetings, everybody. Thank you so much for being here for this special moment for Oscar. Uh, it's special for you as well, special for Carol. 
uh, special for the Lord who has uh, given himself for Oscar. Uh, this is a, a neat time where someone um, publicly gets to say, I believe that Jesus gave himself for me and so now I belong to him. It's symbolic of uh, death and burial and resurrection, Jesus, death, burial and resurrection, but also in a spiritual sense that the old us is gone and we are raised to new life. But it's more than symbolic as well. But we believe that when people take this public step of professing Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that we experience that pleasure and delight of God in doing this. So, Oscar, that being said, do you believe that Jesus died to pay for your sin? Yes. And do you believe that he was raised from the dead? Yes. Yes, and it's your desire to profess him as your Savior and Lord? Yes. All right, repeat after me. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. All right, Oscar. Based on your profession of faith in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That one slipped. <laughs> All right. Hi, church family. This young man is Aiden here, and he is going to make a very important decision today. So, Aiden, I have a question for you. Is it your decision to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life today? Yes. Okay, can you repeat after me? I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Great. Based on that profession of your faith, I'm going to now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Jesus tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken 